Right. In life, there are many mountains to climb, many challenges to face. But for one woman, it was a mountain she didn't get to finish hiking that would light a fire inside of her. 207's Beth McAvoy has her story. Rob and Amanda, the Penobscot people called it Katahdin, meaning greatest mountain. For some, it's an annual hike. For others, a once in a lifetime climb. Maine's highest peak is also the northern end of the Appalachian Trail. For Jennifer Shepard, it's a mountain she's been approaching for years. I have always wanted to summit Katahdin. Never had anybody that really wanted to do it with me and never felt like I was able to do it. It wasn't until Jennifer married her longtime friend, Bryant, that she found her perfect hiking companion. We were just so happy. People always used to tell us, you know, you're right, you're my favorite couple. You're the cutest couple we know. As we were just always happy and laughing. I don't ever remember having even having an argument with him. For both, it was a second marriage. If he was happy, I was happy. It was and vice versa. At Bryant's suggestion, he said, you know, we really should start taking care of ourselves. The couple started to get in shape. And that's how I started talking about Katahdin. For nine months before we came up here, we hiked every single day. In the fall of 2016, the couple visited Baxter State Park to hike Katahdin. We made it about halfway up the hunt trail and he started going like this. And it ended up being that he was having chest pain. As a registered nurse, Jennifer knew not to mess around. And I said, you know what, it's not worth your life. Let's turn around, we'll do it another time. When the couple returned home to Massachusetts, Bryant visited the doctors only to find out the retired firefighter had stage four lung cancer. Four months of treatment and he finished his treatment, got his scans and his cancer was gone. And two weeks later, he was gone. Had complications from his chemotherapy. He basically was a really bright light in this world. And when he died, it was like the world just wasn't, wasn't as bright anymore. In the midst of her grief, a few months after her husband's death, Jennifer fell. Being hard of hearing, I can't use a phone. I was home alone. I pushed my leg back where it went, held it and crawled and pulled my phone was charging, pulled it off onto the floor and I texted my dad and I said, I broke my leg. <laughs> Can you please call an ambulance? Her injuries were so severe, she was forced into a wheelchair. I ended up having so much damage to my leg that no surgeon would touch me. So they said, let's let you sit for a while and see what heals. Everything in Jennifer's life was feeling like an uphill struggle. I was grieving so heavily for him and now I can't even take care of myself. When her leg shattered, it basically told me you probably will never walk normal again. So too did her dream of finishing Katahdin. Now that was probably the lowest point I've ever been in my entire life. So while I was sitting in that wheelchair, feeling sorry for myself, basically, um, a friend of mine was starting his Appalachian Trail through hike. Jennifer started watching his progress online. Just happened to see a comment, something about Katahdin, and I commented on it and said, yeah, that was my dream. You know, Bryant and I were supposed to hike that. And he said, get yourself in hiking shape. I'll hike it with you for him. That simple comment was the glimmer of hope she needed. And I actually stood up out of that wheelchair the very next day. That kind of gave me a spark, the motivation that if I can actually walk again, maybe I can hike again, and maybe I can get up that mountain and spread his ashes. Invigorated with new motivation. It took me about 10 months before I could walk. I went from a wheelchair to a walker, crutches, a cane, and then eventually nothing. Jennifer started to work out and attend physical therapy religiously, and then came the hiking. I remember the first time I went out, I had to hike a mile, and I think I made it a quarter of the way, and I turned around, and I said, no, nope, this isn't gonna happen. It was a slow process. My leg was so weak, it was very hard for me to hike by myself. I was used to having him there with me. But her friend, Russ Lampala, kept encouraging her from out on the trail. This year, despite COVID, everybody gaining weight, I lost 65 pounds hiking. She was ready.